presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. That's awesome, man. It's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. By the end of the week, I should be growling. To begin, a great relationship. Know what you want. Know what the needs of your body are and what the needs of your mind are and what fits well with you. There are millions of men and women. Some of them will make a good match for you and others won't. The two of you only need to be like a key and a lock, a match that works. Market-wise out here, we have, we have the Dow Industrials right now down 85. You get the NASDAQ off 8, S&P's off 2. Gold, gold contract uh, trading down $10.90 at 1934 an ounce. We have silver down 47 cents, $23.36 an ounce. Light sweet crude off 28 cents, trading $89.75 a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10-year note. Down 16 ticks, trading 108.05. The 30 year off full two points at 114.29 in King Dollar. King Dollar's up 410 ticks, trading 105.993. Euro is at the uh, price point of 105. Yen is at uh, 148, and the British pound is at 122 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the SPs, let's take a look at them. It's pretty cool here. So check this out, man. So you're down 20 cents right now. You've done 47 million shares. Now we hit 428.72 out here. Okay, so if you track this as to what we've done out here, you're gonna see, yeah, it's right here. Let me get this line right across it. You're gonna see it was basically two, yeah, two days, maybe three days after the breakout. That's what we've done. Now, the breakout, the, what we're coming into is 91 million shares, folks. Okay, we're only done with 47 million. We did 104 and 100 million on Thursday and Friday. So at this point, you do have a rejection of lower price. You have dramatically lighter volume, and that says that we're going to bounce. Okay? That's on the S&Ps. Now, watch this. On the Qs, it's actually more bullish. Well, the, the, the Qs are much stronger than the S&P. So... On the Qs, now this gets really intriguing because on the Qs, you even you have not even made it to the swing point. Now, <clears throat> I've found is that if you're coming down to a swing point, and it, let's just look at it, okay? So today you get 30 million shares. You, the swing point has 63. On Thursday, we did 60, 68. On Friday, we did 51. So the Qs have rejected lower price out here today, and they haven't made the swing point. That is a positive indication, folks. So I'm not quite sure what this market was going to make it bounce, but right now, you don't have any sellers. Now, let's go to the note and bond market, because there's no doubt the note and bond market, as the dollar, you know, is pretty intense here. We take a look at the note and bond market. The note, I'd say the note and bond market is more intense. Now, what this is doing, you can see this, we've only done 1.1 million contracts. You're at a lower low, and you have the it, contraction, however, is pretty dramatic. It's two point, you're going into 2.1 million contracts versus the 1.1. So you don't have a blow away here as we did last Thursday when we broke that whole consolidation. Well, Wednesday and Thursday broke the consolidation. That being said, the 10-year right now is at 4.532. The two-year, check this out, the two-year is at 5.1. Now let's do the 30-year. 
So USA gets me the 30 here. What has happened is that the 30 year, you can see this has been quite a move. I mean, we, we went down four points, four and a half points in three days. And the 30 year right now is at 4.65. So US1, I'm gonna, I wanna take the 30 year and I'm gonna tie these future contracts together. Because we did this Friday, I just misplaced the number that, that it was. You have to go back 30 years now. Because what we're looking for is that we're looking for where the support was and those swing points were. Okay, so we take a look at this. You can see that we absolutely blew away the swing points from last year. We're into the swings, yeah, 2007, 2008, 2009. And you're right into them. Now, there's a lot, there's a lot of support in here. It's going to be pretty hard to break the 112 level. 112 to 114, you can see this here. You know, I can put a couple of these lines on here. They're right next to each other because it's 112, 114. You know, we'll see. You know, because if you do break them, then you're going to do 104, which a 104 would probably turn into a, a 30 year at uh, about five and a quarter, which would be pretty intense, man. Now, gold. We go into the gold market. Gold is also testing where it had strength with tremendously lighter volume. You don't have a rejection of lower price yet, though. But we did with gold. You know, the equities, some of the, a lot of the equities have a rejection, not the contract, though. The contract is, is doing 1.5 million contracts. You're going into 2 million contracts. It hasn't reached the swing point yet. It hasn't reached the swing point of 2.2 million contracts where that low was established. But the bottom line, you still need a rejection of lower price. And then if we go over to the dollar, it's all about this dollar. Now, if you take a look at the dollar, the next two targets on the dollar go like this. Because you can see, you got a wide price spread in the dollar out here today. So if we take a look at the dollar, what you're gonna see is two different things. You're gonna see the total breakdown with the dollar broken down and the swing point. Now the breakdown, the number of the breakdown is 106 381. That's that's uh, two, 106 281. So many times you like to get a you know a bounce up to that area. The next swing is the 107 903. This area, that's what it's trying to get into right now. Now you can see the destruction on the dollar on the way down, you know, what, what is this? This is a, a weekly, I don't know, that's last, uh, last November. You know, we had gone from 111 to 106 in a, in a week. In a week, okay? And then if we take a look and, and take a look at the expansion contraction, you are just right now, you're just over the 0.382. And the larger number is just over the 0 .50. Stay right there, folks. Come back when I'm at Mr. Steve Rhodes. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 10. You get the NASDAQ up 20. S&Ps are up 7.5. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Steve, uh, listen to Steve, every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time right here at TFNN. He also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for $149 for one month. You get six months of $6.95, which is a savings of $198 at 22%. And you get one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $583 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. He has a huge amount of archives on there, a huge amount of different ways that he looks at the market, and you get to get them all. Steve Rhodes, first off, uh, welcome back and happy birthday. I know you had a oh, birthday over you. there somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We celebrated that in uh, Kyoto. Oh, how um, cool was that? Yeah, it was re it was really a cool birthday experience. Uh, it was four of us that were over there, yeah. and uh, uh, they had planned uh, they had planned for us to go to a, a certain sushi bar. Right. But w when we got over there, they were kind of like, "Hey, it's your birthday." So why don't we go where you want to go? Yes. So I said, okay, that's fine. So we ended up going to a place um, a couple days before my birthday, about two or three days before my birthday. Yeah. And um, when we sat in there, before we were even served a glass of sake or even uh, an order for an appetizer, I looked at the other three and I said, this is where we're coming back for my birthday. I love it. It was just an energy. It was just a vibe. Yeah. And the, uh, the other guy that I was with, uh, Steve, uh, he said the same. He turned right around to me and he said, I'm thinking the exact same thing. How cool is that? Yeah. So then, um, uh, and, and I, when I'm over in Japan, I like to bring my own sake if I can, yes. which is harder and harder to do these days. Oh. Easy in Florida. Okay. But in, in Japan, it's it's harder and harder. So uh, luckily, this place also allowed us to bring in our own sake. So um, I brought ours in for that that meal. And the uh, the chef and owner, be well, first, the chef behind the counter, he saw the sake they were drinking. He understood that we, we kind of knew what we were doing. Yes. Because it was not your normal stuff that people would even know about or bring in. So I, was I, was listening to, I was listening to your education on sake the day you came back. I know. I like uh -huh, it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And so... Um, and so he and I started talking. So one of the first things he said to me, he said he was talking about how this used to be Steve Jobs when he was alive, his favorite restaurant in Kyoto. Wow. And so I 
Look, I first met Steve Jobs in 1983, and in, in my crystal business, I did some business with him. Yeah. So I had his personal phone number in my still in my contact list. So I go to my contact list, I open it up, I said, how about this? You have that. Wow. So it was kind of a, a just kind of a nice thing that we had. Serendipity, so, for sure. Yeah. 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 So so uh, I had ordered four bottles of my favorite sake before we got there, and it was shipped to our hotel. Uh, so so it was waiting for us. Yes. And this was when we were in Tokyo. So we we brought a couple bottles with us to uh, Kyoto as well. And this was a sake town that I used to drink. 15 years ago, okay. and you couldn't get it. You cannot, you cannot, they do not ship it to the U.S. any longer. And I would send these guys, this company, an email every three months. Please, please, you know, let's find some way to do this. So it was nice we had that, we had that sock and we were over there. So the meal was so nice. And, uh, uh, you know, we asked him if it would be okay if we came back. Uh, a couple days later, and yeah. he was looking, and then my wife said, hey, it's his birthday. So he said, absolutely, you guys can come back on your birthday. And so I decided to bring him my favorite bottle of sake as I a gift. Yeah. Just because it was so nice. And, sure. you know, in, and in Japan, it's all about respect right. of, of individuals and so forth. So I bring, so we walk in uh, to the restaurant that night, uh, and it's a family-owned place. So he's got his wife there, his two sons there, his daughter there, and a, and a couple of other employees. Now, we didn't know these folks you know, before we got there, but the first night after we left, it was almost like family. Oh, man. So I show up with a gift for the, the owner. And, and his family. And uh, so he, he comes out and I present it to him. He says, wait a minute. He turns around, he goes into his refrigerator, he pulls out a bottle of sake that he got me for my birthday. Wow. Now, we don't know each other, right? So cool. He gives me the same bottle. Unbelievable. Well, only, one, only one year later. Mine was a 2019, his was a 2020, which doesn't really matter. Wow. But just that, when he saw that, he grabbed me, he said, we're brothers. How cool it, was that? It, yeah, it was. It was just a, and we had a lot of different experiences like that. But the, but that was as far as a birthday celebration goes. Wow. That was that was just that was just so perfect out there. And you so, know, there's no doubt when you have uh, what you what you had. You know, no doubt when you have a real, you know, su su, uh, su it would be a sushi chef, right? Yeah. I oh, mean, oh, it's yeah. just a mind blow what they can do. I mean, well, it's this like, guy here, this is the, his, his, the company was started by his father. So he's in his second, he says he's only in the second generation okay. of businesses. He's, he's kind of like, we're still in the infancy. And the reality is, in Tokyo, there's a lot of businesses have been around. Probably more businesses have, served, have are around over 100 years still. So, in fact, the sake uh, brewery that I, uh, that uh, my favorite sake comes from, they opened in 1141. Oh, just my to God. Keep it, you know, so it's that's like amazing. Cents, right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, so it, it it really was. It's a cool experience. And if people haven't been over to Japan, you know, it's really a wonderful environment to uh, to visit for sure. It was a great time, and uh, we're still overcoming the jet lag. And we get back. We had to go to a wedding this past weekend. And, <laughs> oh, we had to go out to Aspen to go to a wedding, uh, which is not the easiest to get. Life is to. rough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you what. We we did not want to go. And it was I don't blame you. No, I know. I know. It was 33 degrees. When we woke up yesterday morning, so and. It's just the hassle of flying. Right. You know, we had flights that were delayed and canceled, and the new flights. You know, we don't get home till one in the morning. Yeah. You know, so you know, it's it's it could get it could get a little bit. So uh, well, hey, look, I thought what we do here for just for the, the next couple of minutes, let me just uh, yeah, share well, I'll, with I'll you. Yeah, I'll keep you on for the next segment. Anyway, oh, we have some time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, oh yeah. okay, okay, all right, yeah. all right. Uh, um, hey, so I tell you one thing, I'm looking forward to. That's tonight's game. The yes. game that you yes. guys have at home. No, I know. I know. I mean, I, I yeah. am pulling for the Bucks to win. It, wouldn't it be great, Tom, that we have Miami and Tampa both 3-0? Uh, you know, which would only be three teams at this stage. It's early in the season, obviously. I, I'm with you. I'm with but, you. But we don't see that too often. I mean, we've got some great football teams down here. You know, even Jacksonville, all those yep. struggling. A yeah, bit, but uh, so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the game tonight. Hopefully, I can stay up. And know. so, and also check out, folks. Now, this is pretty intense. Now, this is wild. You've heard me say this before. So, we have, you know, we have the Rays here. Okay, so this yes. deal's been going on forever, folks, about the Rays. And you know, I got up in the middle of City Hall, you know, three or four years ago. I says, "Hey, man." So the guy that owns the Rays, folks, re retired from Goldman Sachs at 33 years old. The lease that he had was amazing, and you know, meaning that 85 acres in the middle of a major city, okay? Yeah. And St. Petersburg is growing by leaps and bounds. Well, the bottom line is that it finally came down, and the guy, Stu's quote, or okay, who owns the Rays, right? So yes. what's going on, folks? They're gonna, they're not only gonna do the project, 
so the Rays are staying, the 85 oh. acres. Oh. Yeah. He has, he got uh, hooked up with the Heinz Corporation out of Dallas, who I'm familiar with. I don't know them personally, but they're huge, right? Yes. So now what's going to happen right downtown, right where I'm building, actually, four blocks away. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Is we're in. The bottom line is that the Rays are staying. It's going to be, you know, I don't know, 10, 12 billion dollar project. But it's hilarious because it's just like he wasn't going to let go of that property. And now he now he has the property, has the development rights, and we're going to have a new Ray stadium. So, yeah, and, for, you know, and, and I would imagine it's going to be a similar setup to the stadium they have in Washington, D.C. It, and it's so popular. That's right. It, it, it has to do with it's an entertainment center more totally. so. There's going to be totally. still 60% green, but it's an entertainment center. Stay right there, folks. Steve and I come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Steve Rhodes, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate the growling and prior on this. Uh, yeah, we have uh, the Dow Industrials right now down 37, NASDAQ's up 19, S&P's uh, up 6. And don't forget, folks, you can... Uh, subscribe to Steve's newsletter. It's very easy. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go to the newsletters. You're mastering probability right on that right-hand side. Okay, we are ready, Steve. 
Perfect. So let me tell you what, what everybody else, what, what it is that I'm looking at. I'll just share with you the uh, the information. You can make your own uh, judgments or what have you. Uh, the first screen, and you and I, we've taken a look at this from time to time. I think it's really pertinent now. And this is a 95-year seasonal chart for the S&P 500. So we'll use the S&P 500 as a general market conditions. Of course, we know we've had a pretty poor September out here. And if we take a look at the average return by month, over those 95 years, you can see September sticks out like a sore thumb. But from here, seasonally speaking, as we start to get into the October area, we should see some kind of move higher. But in fact, if we take a look at this chart right now, and kind of going with your thought process on uh, the Qs testing a swing point on lighter volume, having busted through the uh, swing point and so forth, um, this chart here suggests that we should see some type of bounce take place this week. So, so your analysis matches what has taken place over a 95-year period of time out here. So that's the first chart that we can take a look at. The second chart, though, is taking that same 95 year period. And then because we are in a pre election year cycle. So what does that chart look like? Well, that's what this is. This shows us over that 95 year period, which is 23 different touch points or 23 different years out there that markets actually we, one, we should see a, a, a short term bottom form. But mostly what this says, instead of moving lower into October, Tom, this says we move lower into late December. So, yeah, this is saying that Santa That'd could be, pretty be delivering intense. coal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's delivering coal this Christmas, at least if we follow that cycle. And that's really the question is, which seasonal pattern is the correct pattern? Is it the one that says we bottom around now and we move higher into the end of the year? Or is it the one that says, hey, we have a short term bottom, we do a little bit of a counter trend move and then we continue to move lower into December. So if we go looking for clues out here, the very first clue is what took place on Friday inside of the ES Mini. So we're looking at the ES mini charts. The green line, this is a weekly time frame chart. Yes. The green lines represent the TAS market profiles, which are really great tools that help us understand where buyers are, where sellers are, when there's a real breakout, when there's a real breakdown. So if we look on the upper le or the left hand side of the chart, which is coming off of the lows from March of 2020, those blue arrows keep showing us when price had pulled back and found support where the buyers were at, at the bottom of the profile. So that trend remained intact. When we start to take a look at the red arrow out here, we can see those identified breaks of the bottom of those weekly profiles. In other words, a change in trend. On Friday, that's what took place here inside the ES Mini. Price closed below the bottom of its profile, and that says that we have a change in trend. So I would then say, based upon that, the pre-election uh, uh, seasonal cycle is more in play than just the general seasonal cycle out there. So yes. this is one that shows us moving lower into the December time frame. Now, that being said, both seasonal um, um, uh, both of these seasonal patterns suggest that we should see the short term bottom this week. So as we start looking for clues there, here are charts, both the daily and the weekly chart for the ES mini. The one on the left is the weekly chart. We can see the clear break of a swing point. We can see an A to B equals CD to the downside that is formed. It's the same A to B equals CD, Tom, if we take a look at the daily time frame. So the one to one price projection area is 4310. Today is also going to form bar number seven of a TD9 count. And that says we could be getting close to a short-term bottom. So all of this is really the A to B equals CD pattern, the, uh, the potential TD9 counts. They're all leading to the idea that that matches really the seasonal cycle that you and I just took a look at. So, in fact, if we also take a look at each of the futures contracts, uh, and this is what I really prefer. I, I prefer when all of them are giving us the same signal. That doesn't always happen. But today, each of the equity future contracts for their daily time frame will form bar number seven of a TD9 count. And that says that we could get a bottom. When I say could get a bottom, folks, uh, and you, if you don't understand the pattern, it sounds a little foreign. As Tom mentioned, uh, there are many archives uh, that subscribers get to uh, um, uh, if they become members of uh, Mastering Probability, and it will teach you exactly about this pattern. This is a pattern that is really worthwhile to learn. Now, in order for a TD9 count pattern to come into being, we still have to see a spike below today's low. And that needs to take place either tomorrow or the next day or the latest would be Thursday out there. So if we do get a spike, it doesn't have to be a close below. We just have to get a spike below whatever today's lows are out there. And that has to take place again over the next couple of days. If we get that, then the TD9 count pattern is in play. If we don't get it, um, then, you know, we're then I'm probably back to the A to B equals CD pattern. So either of those would, uh, would, would assist us with identifying that short term bottom. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, its advanced decline oscillator, it attains 
claimed oversold status, I believe it was last Wednesday or Thursday. And the way that that works, and what, what this is, folks, when I say an advanced client oscillator, an oscillator is simply the difference between two things. And the two things here, I'm using the advanced decline line, so that's this second panel out there, and I'm just looking at the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average. And that's what's reflected in the, in the, uh, uh, in the bar below that where it says advanced decline oscillator. When that gets below zero, that tells us that sellers are in control. When it's above the zero threshold level, then buyers are in control. But it also helps us to understand overbought and oversold readings. Oversold readings take place, we get down to the minus 150 level. Overbought, when we get to the plus 150 area. Now that doesn't mean we can't get more oversold or that you can't get more overbought. But what it does tell us, if we study the charts and the chart action, it says that we're getting close to some type of a bottom out there. So between the TD9 counts, the A to B equals C, CD pattern, uh, the swing points, and, and, and fewer sellers out there, as you said, we should see some type of counter trend move. So all of this supports at least a short-term bottom. So what should we look for? Well, the other thing that is going to impact the market out here is going to be King Dollar. And um, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, and here, when we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, when we close, the, when we right now we're trading above a swing point from probably about six or seven weeks ago inside the U.S. dollar at 104.75. If we close above that this week, the signal there, Tom, is that it over time. Not saying it happens tomorrow, but over time wants to make a move all the way up to the top of its profile. Now, the reason that I say that is this is a bullish structured profile. What I mean by that, folks, is the profiles typically have three lines. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value in between the top and the bottom. But and so and at the bottom are buyers and at the top are sellers. So when we have the center line closer in proximity to the bottom than the top, that gives us a bullish structured view. We have more buyers than we really have sellers. And once price closes above that center line, that's at 103.26, but right now I'll use 104.75 as real key level. If we get a close above that, typically what happens is price will go ahead and seek out the top of that profile. So that's all the way up at 113.34. Now, what, what's nice about that is that actually supports this idea of that move lower into the end of December yes. with a stronger dollar out there. So, again, we're taking a little bit. Look, that's on a monthly chart, by the way, that we're looking at, that 104.75. Uh, so closing above that on a monthly basis, we just have a few days to go there, is going to be a real key level for us to be watching and observing. This happens to be the correlation chart, Tom, and I'm using here a 10-day average. So let's take a look at the ten day, last 10 days, kind of averaging the direction out there, and the top part is the ES mini, the center part is the US dollar index, and the bottom part is the correlation. And when those bars are below zero, there's an inverse correlation. So longer term, this supports that idea of the markets moving lower. And uh, what I would expect, folks, I would expect any counter trend move that we get here to run into resistance at about 44.24. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a short term bounce up to about 44.24 before we continue to resume lower into the end of the year. And we get to 113, man. We have a, quite a downdraft, man. <laughs> no doubt. This was awesome, Steve. Have a great one, man. Have a safe Thanks, one. Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. So come right back. Get equities and options report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? 
Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now is flat, uh, flat. You get the NASDAQ up 33, S&Ps are up 10. And so uh, let's go take a look at the car companies because, you know, the way the charts are reading the car companies, uh, bottom line, it would look to me like uh, this strike is probably going to get settled. I mean, you're, if we look at GM, you can see it's at the lower end of its consolidation. That's rejected lower price out here today. You know, you're up for 42 cents. And in the context of, uh, you know, now they've, they've been down, you know, since we're at 33, they're down from 43. But that's 43 is going back to July. If we take a look at Ford, you're looking at the same deal. So this is going to get interesting chart-wise versus fundamentally what's happening. You know, Ford, same deal. Ford is down, you know, from July of uh, $15 to 12 bucks. But you can see this is that on Friday, we actually moved higher with volume. Today, you rejected lower price. You're moving higher once again. So, you know, we'll see how this baby shakes out. I mean, the way the union is doing it is that they're, they're breaking this down factory by factory so they can basically inflict the most amount of damage um, you know to get the car companies to back to the table because my understanding is that just at this particular point they're just not back to the table yet we go take a look at uh, Amazon so Amazon you know you know they I mean AI has been around for a long time folks and Amazon no doubt has always been one of the best ones at it okay that's why Amazon is Amazon now that being said, they went out this morning and paid four billion. Now that's just an investment, okay? They're 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 in a minority position here for four billion dollars. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this whole AI works out. But there's monster amounts of money that's coming into AI. There's no doubt about it. You know, it didn't say what their minority position is actually is going to be, but. Um, bottom line is that, you know, it's not a majority position, it's a minority position. What will happen is that the company that they're buying is going to use AWS in order to do everything that they need, meaning, you know, because it's repetition on these large servers as to how AI works. That's, that's the bottom line. Now, if we take a look at Amazon, you'll, you'll, you know, Amazon went through the bottom of its consolidation. And thus far, you know, rejected lower price. You know, so we get down to 128.77 today. We put this on a weekly. You know, the weekly was coming into strength. You know, so this is strictly looks to me like it's building costs of a higher price. That's how this thing is set up. If we now let's go into the gold market for a bit because it's the gold market is pretty intriguing right here. It, well, it has been for a while, but <laughs> every time that you think you're getting something out of it, bottom line comes all the way back down. 
Now, if we take a look at an Eco Eagle, AEM, what you're going to see is this. He's out on 1.3 million shares, but you're going into 1.4 million shares. I mean, it's not even close. And you have a swing high that has good volume, too. We take a look at the uh, AU. You take a look at AU. Uh, this is a nice setup, man. You know, now I, have, I own the stock. We own the stock in, in the gold report. So you take a look at this, and you're going to see, you know, you came down to 1762 today. You had volume of 890 million. You rejected lower price, you're at 819. Well, you're coming into 5.2 million. Because what also happened is this. This is what ended up happening, folks, okay? On that day, what is that? That was uh, two, four, six, seven trading days ago when I think that was, was probably option, if it wasn't option expiration, the bottom line is that something came down inside all the indices and you're going to see plenty of huge spikes with volume inside you know these i'm looking more so at gold stocks so you see them inside of gold stocks and it was a positive day that day which is huge now if we go over to newmont we take a look at newmont what you're going to see with newmont you know bottom line is that you get down to 39.78 today rejected it you're at 42 You've done 5 million shares, and the 5 million is coming into 25 million. Okay, that's a nice setup. That's a nice setup. Barrick, okay, Barrick is the big risk taker out here. Barrick hasn't rejected lower price yet. Barrick is, we get down to 1547. Now, 1548, I think, was the swing. Yeah, 1548 was the swing. So you're going to have less volume than the swing, because the swing was 20, no, 19. 19 million, and you're at 11. No, oh, it? oh my God. It's pretty tough seeing with one eye, I can tell you that, folks. It's so weird. Because now I'm totally blind to my left eye. Um, what is that? 12. So, you, well, it's going to be close. The volume's 11 versus 12. Going, you know, and we haven't had rejected a little price yet. Those are the two largest weightings, also, in the Excel. And the HUI and the GDI, I mean the XAU. Now, if we go over to the GDX, what you're going to see, nice setup. You know, you, you're coming into 30 million, you've only done 12. And you've had a rejection of lower price at 28.26. So still, this still wants higher price. That's how this is laid out. So the key is going to be, one of the keys are going to be, of course, it's always the dollar. But let's just go over to the silver market and see how this baby's shaking out. Okay, so silver's down 54 cents today, 46 cents today. You're running 5,400 contracts. Yeah, that's light contract volume. You know, but when we, when we did do the webinar, folks, for the gold report, what did happen is this, is that the... On the short-term basis, silver at that point was stronger than gold. But as soon as you put it on a, a monthly basis, gold is much stronger than silver. And what's going to get intriguing here is this. So let's go, let's go look at the copper contract because the next big deal in the miners is copper. You know, you, know, you have... These large mines, they're going after copper because of the electrification of cars, businesses, all of the above. So copper is still trading out here at, at 367, you know, and it has rejected lower price out here today. It's coming into last uh, Thursday, this thing came down with volume. Last Thursday, we came down with 100, no, 124,000 contracts, and we get 52. You know, but if you see some of these big mining companies, particularly Barrick, they're going after copper in a monster way because they're looking forward, and we're going to need a lot of copper. 
down. Dow Industrials right now up seven. Nasdaq's up 33. S&P's up 11. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down uh, 23. Get the NASDAQ up 19. S&Ps are up uh, 6.5. So if we look at the indice volume out here, you're also going to see... A, a Pretty big contraction. So, nine. We did nine twenty one, nine hundred twenty one million on uh, Friday. You're at four thirty seven right now. So, more than likely, this will do about eight fifty. So you can see what happens. So you get a lower low. You contracted uh, during the update. I'll, I'll try to get you closer as to what we actually did. But we also had done this on Friday. So if you take a look at this, see, right now you, you can see Thursday. On the composite, we did five billion. Friday, you did 4.3. So you were going lower with less sellers. Now today, we're at 3.6. So at 3.6, you actually can do about 4.3, 4.4 today on the composite. We'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But it is amazing how much volume that they put in at the end of the day. There's no doubt about that. Now. 
What has also happened with the composite is that the composite versus the NDX did break the swing, but it rejected the swing. You know, we got down to uh, 13,132 today, and that swing point was at uh, 13,000. One sixty one. So you have the break, you have the rejection, and you're gonna have lighter volume. So we just may be seeing a turnaround Tuesday, you know, and we'll see what kind of bounce you get. Remember on the bounces, folks, okay? If you're bouncing and you're bouncing with light volume, then the bottom line is that is the market that wants to go lower. If you're bouncing and you're getting wide price spread and you get an expansion of volume, well guess what? That's a market that wants higher price. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come visit Tommy tomorrow morning. It kicks us off at 9 a.m. Great show. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.